The Taco Bell inside my apartment complex actually serves breakfast now, and it's so brand new, it's not even on the drive-thru menu. So I pull in the four in the morning, hammered. Lady's just yelling at me, sir, we only serve breakfast now. I'm like, I don't know what you got. What do you want me to say? I don't even speak Spanish. I, I know the book is on the table. Do you serve that? There was a line behind you, a um, McMuffin. I'll take a McMuffin. Why don't you go across the street and get me a McMuffin? We don't serve McMuffins here. Oh, well then, McMuffin Belgrande. Whatever you call it in your country. Why don't you take some French toast, drop it in a taco. I'll see you in 20 feet. I'm hammered, I have no standards. You don't believe me? Look who's in the passenger seat. Sorry you had to hear that. I just feel old around my cousins, man. My cousin has a one-year-old, she baby-proofed the house. Everything from the waist down is empty. Cabinets, drawers, it looks like a Oompa Loompa robbed their house. And I feel bad for the little boy because he'll never learn consequences, you know? When we were little kids, where did our mom put the household cleaning products? Underneath the sink, yeah. I could open it up, grab some pine salt, drink it, be like, shit, shouldn't have drank that. It's got a lemon on it, but it doesn't taste like lemons. It tastes like dizziness and regret. He has non-toxic crayons, non-toxic. That's basically Crayola's way of saying, hey, we know you suck as parents, let him eat whatever he wants. Because if you're gonna make crayons non-toxic, make them 100% edible, like give fat kids diet crayons. Right, with 2% with glue. Non-toxic, who's ordering toxic? Could I have some toxic crayons? My kid's kind of an asshole. <laughs> we had this rule in my house when I was little. If my parents told me not to play with something and they caught me playing with that something, they beat my ass with that something. <laughs> Curling iron, high heels, whatever. <laughs> I'm six years old, okay? My dad grounds me from all my toys. He catches me playing with my teddy bear. Now, it sounds cute, yeah, you know what? Get beaten with a teddy bear, it's kind of fluffy, maybe it tickles. He hit me with the face side, with the plastic nose, the face side. And then he cut me with the paper that sticks out the teddy bear's ass. He paper cut me like that. Do you know how traumatic it feels to be beaten by your own teddy bear? You have nothing to sleep with ever again. I put some stuff up on YouTube. I was up on YouTube. I put some of my stand-up clips on YouTube. I thought it would help me promote myself a lot better. It didn't. You know why? Because anybody here can be on YouTube. There's no screening process. They don't check for talent or credits or anything. My video has 20,000 hits on YouTube. You know what has 57 million hits on YouTube? Sneezing Panda. <laughs> there are 120 people in this room right now. Imagine how double-packed this bitch would be if people knew Sneezing Panda was gonna show up. In fact, I'm quitting comedy tonight. This is my last show. I'm gonna go buy myself a panda with allergies. Still out arenas all across the country, just running a feather underneath his nose on stage. <laughs> Come on, buddy, it's showtime. That's what I hate about the internet. It made everybody feel like their opinion matters. You can write the most hateful, racist crap, and it pops up instantly for the whole world to see in one second. Remember back in the good old days when we were growing up? Before I tell the world that Jessica was a whore, you had to go to a public bathroom and carve it into the stall wall. <laughs> Whenever I'm at Starbucks and they see a jar that says tips, I spit in it. And then I tell the cashier that I'm dyslexic. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I like that dude, it's cute. I like that line, it's cute. I'm a grown man, I still eat cookie crisp cereal. I love cookie crisp cereal. You know why? It's the cockiest of all the breakfast cereals. You know what the slogan is for Cookie Crisp cereal? If you like cookies, you'll love Cookie Crisp. It's cocky. They didn't say if you like cookies, you'll probably enjoy the similar taste of Cookie Crisp. They said if you like, you'll love. They guaranteed you an emotional upgrade. No other cereal can make that claim. If you like fruit, you'll love Fruit Loops. No, you fucking won't, because there's, there's no real fruit in a Fruit Loop. But Fruit Loops knows that. That's why they spell fruit, F-R-O-O-T. If you like rice, you'll puke up a Rice Krispie. Of course you fucking will, because they have none of the same qualities as real rice. You can't eat them with chopsticks, and they taste horrible with jambalaya. <laughs> I want my cereal to show confidence and authority. <laughs> Captain Crunch. Amen. High-ranking military official. Followed by a manly sound like Crunch. I'll fucking eat that. <laughs> Sergeant Soggy, not interested. Not interested. 
We only eat food that has high-ranking, powerful jobs because we trust and respect those jobs. Um, Captain Crunch, Dr. Pepper, Burger King, we respect those jobs. Nobody would ever eat cream and custodian. <laughs> Prostitute Pringles. <laughs> Ho-hos. I can't even watch Food Network. They're cooking with things I don't have in my kitchen. I can't relate. Oregano, olive oil, pots, pans. You know what I'm <laughs> I need a show for me. Iron Chef, Boy RD. That's what I need. I saw that show, Bizarre Foods. You ever seen that show, Bizarre Foods? Last, last, last season, he was in Ethiopia eating a deer penis. I know, unattached. <laughs> He's <laughs> chasing down a season finale. Come here, come here. We're running out of tape. But here's the funny thing. He's sitting there eating it. Everybody else around, all the Ethiopians around him, they're just laughing at him. And at that point, I realized in America, we call that show Bizarre Foods. In Ethiopia, they call it punked. <laughs> I live by myself and live in an apartment. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. I love living by myself. But uh, sometimes I find myself doing things that make me feel lonely. Last week, I ate an entire birthday cake by myself. I know. It wasn't my birthday. Let me explain real quick. If you uh, order a personalized cake at the grocery store, right, you don't pick it up in three days, they sell that cake to the public. I bought it. <laughs> I don't know if you know how creepy it feels to eat an entire birthday cake that has somebody else's name on it, but it feels like you killed that person on their birthday. <laughs> All my friends have houses. They brag to me about their house. Paul, check out my walk-in closet. I'm like, dude, every closet is a walk-in closet. A closet you can't walk into is a wall. <laughs> like, what's this, your step-on carpet? <laughs> and that's your sit-down toilet? Awesome. <laughs> I got pulled over a month ago. Sucked, man. Cop came up to my car yelling at me. Sir, did you know your rear passenger side brake light is out? I'm like, uh, no, officer, because I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I'm inside the car. <laughs> Like, you have an advantage over me. Maybe if I was pushing the car. I realize that's why we hate cops. You know why we hate cops? They talk in their cop lingo. They get mad that we don't understand their lingo. You ever seen those signs, no parking, no standing? You know what standing is? That's when you're sitting in your car waiting to pick somebody up. That's what the police call standing. So if you get a ticket for standing, you don't know what standing is. How confusing is that conversation? Like, sir, roll down your window. I'm have to write you a ticket for standing. Um, I was standing earlier at Starbucks. <laughs> Why didn't you write me a ticket then? <laughs> Sir, you're standing now. Like, fucker, you're standing. <laughs> Have you never watched Sesame Street? Because <laughs> what's the most confusing, embarrassing thing? You've got to go to court in two weeks and fight the ticket. Sir, please take the stand. Okay, wait a second. Um, you want me to stand in the stand or sit in the stand? Because I ain't falling for that shit again. <laughs> take things way too literally, that's my problem, man. I can never be a cowboy in the Wild West. First off, Indian cowboy, ironic. Yeah. <laughs> Secondly, somebody challenged me to a duel at high noon, I'd be like, oh, I know what noon is. What's high noon? Is that like 420? <laughs> I mean, I don't even know anything about cars, man. My car breaks down all the time, I just pop up in the hood and stare. I mean, that's all I know what to do. That's what I see people do on the side of the street. Just I don't know how long I'm supposed to stare for, but. Literally, I could pop up in the hood, there could be two dead monkeys right there. Honestly, and I would have been like, well, that's clearly the problem. Those monkeys are dead. We, we need some live monkeys to get this party started.